Business Brain, episode 482 for Casual Friday, September 8th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take your ideas, our ideas, we analyze them together to tune our business brains And that way we can all keep on living that charmed life. Sponsors for this episode include fastgrowingtrees.com slash businessbrain, where you get to save 15% off your entire order from this fantastic business only now through October 15th. So you got to get on this. Plus fall is planting season anyway, so you want to get on this. We'll talk more in depth about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Happy Friday from California. How you doing? I'm good. Is it casual Friday or is it causal Friday? Right. If we move those letters around, are we, are we (laughs) able to be more productive? I don't know, man. (laughs) That's good. Yeah. Good point. I like Uh, the casual. I like the, I do like the casual. That's good. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been, I've been talking about this concept of no phone Friday for a long time. I I haven't been able to do it yet, but I'm I'm still, (laughs) I'm still building towards it, but I've got to convince a few people in my life. I, yeah, I wonder about that. There was there was one Friday recently where I like texted you something in Slack, and I'm like, oh, I won't hear from him today because uh, yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. it's no phone Friday, and and like sure enough, like it it was it was a longer than usual response time. Now you might have been driving or you might have been in the middle of something, yeah. but I was like, oh, he's succeeding. This is great. So. Yeah, well, you could do it on your computer, right? Because I could walk. I'm still going to work. So yeah, you come into your computer and you have Slack and yeah, yes, I'm, of course, you know, messages yeah. and stuff, and you can answer there. But just not having it in your pocket the whole time. So you know, I'm, I um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, I use the the focus modes uh, that Apple has on the iPhones now, mm-hmm. and I have one that I call Nuclear, and oh. it's only only my family can get through to me. So my, my wife, my two kids, yeah. and now of course my niece, cause she lives with us. So it is four people plus me, uh, in that group and nothing else gets through no notifications from anything else. And I, I will use that. Like, you know, I mentioned we kind of sort of wound up taking a staycation this past yeah. weekend. I was in nuclear mode most of the weekend and it really, it makes a difference because I can go and choose to look at my notifications, but they don't yes. interrupt me. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Very hey, cool. We got an email from David here after we did episode 480 on imposter syndrome. And he says about that episode, I just learned that I struggle with imposter syndrome to some extent from listening. He says, uh, the business that I own thrived in an area that I did not really expect. This was waste management services. I am an environmental engineer and in full-time employment while running the business on the side. I've had the urge to separate the business so that waste management is registered under a different name and leave the actual management duties to my team while I work on yet another undertaking. The other source of the imposter syndrome feeling would be about my financial worth of my business. There's a level I want to be at where my team gets salaries above industry average and not the minimum and a level where I can confidently say that I am leaving formal employment to build my business. Not paying my employees salaries that I want makes me feel like I am not doing a respectable job as a business owner. Nonetheless, my takeaway from the discussion is I must own it and develop a positive business outlook. He then also has uh, a question about managing how to manage business as husband and wife, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I, I want to do this this imposter syndrome thing yeah. first. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I never, I had never realized that this version of imposter syndrome exists. I have experienced it, David, you are not alone, like not being able to pay. Like whenever I go to hire somebody, I, that's when I feel imposter syndrome, the worst, you know, Hmm. we just talked in the last episode about hiring your first employee. I I wish we had thought about this email before that, because I I would like, well, it's fine. We just add to the conversation. That's why you subscribe to the show, right? You, You are subscribed to the show, right folks. That way you get the whole conversation. Because this is an extension of that in a, in some ways, because, you know, you think, all right, I'm ready to hire somebody. I need somebody. I can really only afford to pay X. Oh, gosh, somebody that's that the, the person I need isn't going to be willing to work for X. They're going to think I'm a failure. Like you're, you're going to convince yourself of all this stuff before you ever even post about the job, let alone interview someone. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's the, the one thing I would say. um to David is, I think he's done a great job of changing the framework of imposter syndrome. And instead yeah. of, 
it being in front of him holding him back, he's actually got it shifted the frame so it's behind him, kind of pushing him forward. And and what I mean by that is num number one, he's self aware. Uh, and I would say, you know, he's talking about splitting the business off so he can go do something else and uh let people take over and being concerned about, you know, wanting to pay his people more. Those are great traits. I mean, that's a positive aspect of yeah. imposter syndrome. It, so that, that that's it absolutely gonna get is. you. Yeah, but yeah, it will but it will hold you back. Like you gotta you gotta yeah, manage yes. the, the negative parts of that. It's not correct, entirely correct. positive. But yeah, yeah it shows well, that you're that's where, yeah, you're moving at, forward. At the end here he says, I have to own it. I have to develop a positive business outlook. That you know, you're 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 more than halfway there, um, because all the, I I've just really been thinking about it a lot lately of the kind of anxieties that we face as business owners, and this financial one is definitely uh, oh, it's a huge one, a huge part. I and I, go ahead, no. taking it to, and and being self aware enough to use it as a motivator is really a great way to. Uh, try to turn it into something positive. That's yeah. In, in terms of hiring people, cause I like, I experience this pretty much every time I hire somebody and, and many times <laughs> when I decide not to hire somebody too. Uh, in fact, yeah. it, it certainly, I'm, I, I'm sure it has been the reason I have chosen not to expand the team at times. Right. Because I, I can't like, people are going to laugh at me when I tell them this, I don't want them to laugh at me, you know, uh, one way and perhaps this is the reason I have adopted this practice. I never really thought about it now, but I, whenever I'm hiring for a position, I turn things upside down from what I have experienced as the traditional thing. The tradition being you talk to someone about a job, you find they're the right person. Then you start talking about salary. Right. And, and to me, that is just fraught with opportunities to waste everybody's time. Because if I'm not going to be able to pay you or yes, even offer yes. you a salary that you want, then why should we be talking? Like it's, it's a waste yeah, of time right. for both of us. Everybody. Yeah. And so I start with it at the very beginning. And and if it makes sense to put it in the job posting, I will. But if not, I certainly have the conversation about salary right up front. And I don't, that is one of the few places where I, I don't play the negotiation game of, you know, he who speaks first about it loses. It's like, no. If we're going to be, you know, if we're going to be offering, you know, $35,000 a year for this position, whatever it is, it's like, I'm going to tell you that like, and our salary range is right in that 35 K a year range. Does that work for you? Yeah. That's y you right. know, and if not, tell me what does, like, if you're like, well, I really would need a minimum of 42. Okay, great. I'm going to mark that down. And that's now going to factor into my decision here. If yeah. I really like you and, and you are that person that's like the, you know, what did we say in the last epi episode? The the generalist who is super mm -hmm. talented. Okay, maybe I can carve some extra money out because going from 35 to 42 isn't a huge deal. If you tell me, well, I need 75. Okay, awesome. Let me let you go so you can pursue opportunities that are more in line with what you need. Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it, it uh, and that's okay. Time. We used, yeah. yeah, we used to do the same thing. We We put a questionnaire out and say, hey, fill this out. Yeah. Before you even contact us, number one, that was a test to see whether they would follow instructions. Yes. But one of the questions on there is like, what salary range are you looking for? You know, and and try to let, let's let's try to figure this out and just give us a a range. It doesn't mean you know uh, that it's too low, too high, because I we already have an idea, and I yeah. like to do the same thing. It's like, look, this position. This is the salary range and uh, based on experience and, you know, if we really love, you know, interacting with you and the meeting is great and it looks good, well, we we probably be pay at the high end of that. Right. Uh, you know, right. that scale. All right. Hey, you know what? Fall is planting season. It's true. Many plants actually do better when planted this time of year, but you have to know where to start. And that's why I love this business that is our sponsor this week fastgrowingtrees.com the experts at fast growing trees curate thousands of plants so you can find the perfect fit for your specific climate location and needs you don't have to drive around to nurseries and big garden centers fast growing trees makes it easy to order online and your plants are shipped to your door in just one to two days we've tried this at home right it's amazing i love businesses like this that just take my headaches away especially 
for things where I'm not really an expert, but I kind of want to have it. Like, you know, it's nice to have plants, right? You get privacy, shade, or just natural beauty that you add to your yard, right? They have these in-house experts ready to help you make the right selection with growing and care advice available 24-7. We have bought stuff from Fast Growing Trees over the course of this year, and they have been so helpful. We had one plant that we got, and we're like, are you sure this is going to work in our climate? And they're like, of course. And then we get it and we planted it and, you know, a weekend, it was like, I don't know. And they're like, trust it, trust the system. That thing is thriving now. They were right. Like, it's, this is amazing what they do. I love fast growing trees. It's so great. Even if you've never had a green thumb, they'll make you feel like you do. Like they have with over 1 million happy fast growing trees customers across the country. Plus their 30 day alive and thrive guarantee, you know, kind of stands for itself. Listeners to our show here get 15% off your entire order when you go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash businessbrain, but only through October 15th. So that's 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash businessbrain. One more time, fastgrowingtrees.com slash businessbrain. And our thanks to Fast Growing Trees for sponsoring us this week. So David's uh, second question about working with your spouse. I, I, I wonder if, if there's a, a way to factor that into imposter syndrome too, because one way to, I think, mitigate imposter syndrome is to have a partner uh, in your business. And especially if that partner is someone, hopefully it's someone that you just respect in general. And, and, and if that person is your spouse, I would expect that you would, would respect them in general. And now you're having to have these conversations about what you're, you can actually afford with the business side. Like uh, maybe, maybe there's, maybe that helps with imposter syndrome. I don't know. Maybe it hurts. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I love this topic. You know, we, yeah. we, it's been seven years since we've done a show about working what? with your spouse. Yeah. Episode 94. So since we're both married, I'm going to go ahead and just say we're experts in this topic. <laughs> and we're so, still married seven years later married. and we still yes. work with our spouses. So yes, right. I would, That's I would right. say, whether we think we're experts in this topic yeah, or not, exactly. uh, we would qualify in many other people's eyes, even though we feel like imposters. There you go. So I, I, th I think that, um, you know, I, I use this, uh, I say this all the time, the right spouse is a force multiplier mm -hmm. in the sense of everything you do in your business, because they look at things differently. Um, they bring a different skill set, and they certainly think about the business on another level than a you know, a standard employee. Yeah. Um, a few things that, that I found worked for me is one, I, I've always enjoyed, uh, when we work in different departments and that we're not directly managing one another. Right. I think that, uh, that autonomy has made it, uh, very successful. If, you know, when Renee is running the, back office or yep. taking over certain projects and she runs like now she runs our, our real estate business. Yep. And I work for her in that business. Sure. So my whole concept is that I'm not, I'm the, not the business owner and she's my wife helping me. No, that she's the expert. She's learned it, developed it. Yep. She tells, you know, Hey, uh, I want, we, let's do this. want to do this thing. So I'm, I'm working for her that way. Yeah. On the yep. other side, I, I do that. We do that with backbeat too. Lisa runs Perfect. our whole like uh, client service and, and podcaster Great. relations area. And I always tell her, or, you know, it's like, well, what do you think we should do here? And she's like, well, you, you know, you, you, you know, it's your business. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, but like, I don't know this part of this business as well as you Correct. do. Autonomy. And so, yeah. So you tell me and, or just do it. And if, I mean, it's like with any, with anybody that you trust in your business, you got to give them that autonomy. And if they screw Correct. something, if they do something that you would not have chosen to do, then you stop. And the first thing I ask is, wait a minute, even though I didn't, I wouldn't have chosen this same thing is what they chose as good as or better than what I would have done. And if the answer is yes to either of those questions, well, then obviously that's a win because you didn't have to do yeah. the work and somebody else did it. But even if they screw it up in a way that actually causes objective, you know, harm to the business, it's not going to be that bad. Like there's, there's, it's right. better to just let people 
do their thing and give because otherwise you can't make mistakes. You got to make. Them. I made them. I still I, make I them. I make them all the time. Right. Correct. So yeah. you 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 have to just like we've talked about this on the show about managing you know working with employees and and understanding what they make mistakes and backing them up so they learn. It's the same thing with both of your spouse and having that uh, respectful conversation. I think is is critical and. If you're working with your spouse and you're at work and there's a bunch of employees around, I think you really have to have the discussion before you do that about, hey, our personal life is going to be separate and we're not going to have the discussions out in front of everybody about stuff that's going on in our personal life. Just like maybe when you go home, you want to take a break and not talk about work for a while. Um, that's, I think, harder to do. But um I think that separation is real important because you want the people around you to look at you in a different light than just, oh, that's the boss's wife or the boss's husband, and they just do the books or whatever. Uh, you want them to be that autonomy. When someone would come and ask me, I'd say, you need to go check with Renee. She runs that part of the business. I don't know. you know, And then she would do the same for me. So I think that separation and keeping things uh, separate is important. Yes. Yeah. You got to have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, in a sense that's important with every employee, but you're right. Yeah. It, like, it, especially when it's someone that you li presumably live with and, and you've got to share a, yep. the rest of your life with it. It's good to have the business sort of have those, you know, those guardrails. Yeah, like, yeah. if, if you're working and it's just you two, that's a different type of thing. You're going to, you know, talk about personal stuff all the time. You know, hey, I'm going to go do this. I'm, I'm going to pick up this or whatever. It's it, it's diff that's a different uh situation. But when you have employees and your team around you, you you want them to think of you each as, you know, at whatever level they're at, supervisor, VP or you know, this kind of thing, not just the boss's wife or the the yes. boss's husband. Yeah, no, <laughs> they, right. It, it needs to be, yes, that's absolutely right. It it needs to not just be, oh crap, it's the boss's spouse. It's like, no, this is a person with a position in the company that has yep. a, a real That's right. A, a real job and real power yes. and 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 autonomy. Absolutely. They man. would be here if they were your spouse or not. Or not. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. That's what everybody needs to get on board with. And, yep. you know, I never planned to work with my spouse. It was only when I was starting a new business and I had an outside investor who knew my wife and said, okay, I'll do this deal. But one of the uh, requirements is that Renee has to come work for the company. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, how, how is that important? You know, and he's like, well, no one manages your money better than your spouse. Yeah. And he was right. And so, you know, taking care of all this stuff. And it was right when we started getting into the credit card points and all the affinity things that we benefited so much from. So she managed that stuff so well that I don't have that skill set. You know, I just am right. not that kind of detailed person. And she nailed it. And this guy, uh, Jay, who, he saw it. Who was my partner. Yeah. He saw it. He goes, you yep. need somebody to do this kind of stuff. And, um, and, it, and it's been great. Yes, there are times when you you struggle, uh, just like with any person you work with, though, right? And right. so you, you have to take that step back. And there's a little more nuance, I think, required sometimes before you react to something that maybe you're not happy with or like you said earlier, Dave, oh, this is a mistake. Or you, you got to think about it because there is some extra baggage there that you uh, you may have to work through. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's yeah. great. I think uh, even, you know, like David said, he's especially newlyweds. Um, just make sure you you both are bringing something to the table uh, that is valuable to the business. Like that point. Don't don't hire your spouse, husband or wife just to give them some work. Oh, no, you might. You might be in a scenario where it is the best decision financially I, you know, if the business is able to support the two of you, but maybe not support the two of you and another person, you, you know, depending on how your home finances are, I, like you may be financially persuaded to hire your spouse because you because that's just the the the, the most the business can afford at that moment. That's fine. There's nothing yeah, wrong yeah, with that. Yeah. It happens all the time. But make sure you both have stuff 
to do that's actually yeah. valuable to the business. Yeah, don't do it the yeah. other way where it's like, well, you have nothing to do. Well, come work for me. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Like, and it could be anything. You could be running the warehouse or shipping boxes. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it, But make sure it's, you know, hey, come. And maybe you don't know until they get in there and start to kind of feel the way around. But yeah. they, they got to find something. Yeah. Got to find something. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Thank you to David uh, today and Robert the other day for sending in the, your emails to feedback at businessbrain.show. Remember, when you send an email in, if we feature it on the show, and you know we, we asked last week to start submitting, or asked last episode, to start submitting your ideas for that list of sort of menial, not menial, but that list of inconsequential things to do because nothing is inconsequential yeah. when you don't have something else to do. If we feature, if you just send in one item and we put it on the list, we're going to feature the list on the show. Your email gets featured. Therefore you are added to our drawing that we're doing this year for a MacBook air. Like, and trust me when I tell you, when you can go back through and count the number of people that are on this, it's, it's, you yeah, know, several, several handfuls. <laughs> it's not thousands. Yes. Right. So, yes. You're you're in you're in like there's a good chance you're gonna be the one that wins. So feedback at businessbrain.show. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks to our sponsor, Fast Growing Trees at fastgrowingtrees.com slash businessbrain. And uh yeah. Have a great weekend. Keep on chip living that charmed life, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>